What's up guys, Joe at Momentum Works. Today we're doing things a little bit different. So if you're used to watching the channel, this will be something new. And if this is your first time checking us out, this is just what it looks like. Today we're talking about the history of Garrett. Stay tuned. So if you're into turbos, you know that you know a lot of the big name guys, Garrett, Pulset, Bohr Werner, and then you have a lot of smaller ones that kind of go off of that. Uh, you got IHI, you've got your Triple K, you've got your Schweitzer. A lot of these companies have been acquired. But today we're going to specifically talk about Garrett. So Garrett was started by somebody with the name John Clifford Garrett. Uh, he was born back in the turn of the century, around the early 1900s. John Clifford Garrett was actually the 28th employee at Lockheed Martin. So he didn't actually start in the turbocharger business. He was in the aviation industry. Um, so he worked there at Lockheed developing different aviation products. Uh, eventually, he wanted to create his own company. So he went on to create the Aircraft Tool and Supply Company in 1936, uh, which would later become the Garrett Supply Company. And this was started from a small one-room office in Los Angeles. So what they were doing here is they were creating parts for aircraft still in the aviation industry. Uh, in the late 30s, their first product was an aluminum aircraft intercooler. Um, and this is good timing because he's right here in time for the Second World War, uh, where planes were very crucial to, you know, the U.S. pulling the W. Did I get too political? I don't care. Back to back World War champs. Woo! I know who my demographic is who watches these videos. So anyway, they went on. They made all different kinds of aviation stuff for like the Corvair 880, the Lockheed Super Constellation, the Vicar Viscount, the Sud Aviation Carvel. Douglas DC-8, the Boeing 707. Clearly, I don't know anything about aviation, guys. I'm just reading off, you know, the type of planes that they made products for. Um, Garrett's company actually also developed the slides that come out of the sides of the plane. If you crash, I hope you never crash on a plane, but you can thank them for that. Um, so Garrett really started off just doing all kinds of aviation stuff and helped them jump into uh, you know, hey, you know, turbochargers might be something that they want to explore. So World War II is going on. Things are going great for Garrett. They're selling something ridiculous, like $112 million worth of equipment um, to the U.S. military. And I know $112 million probably doesn't sound like a whole lot now, but back in the 40s, $112 million. Uh, I'll put whatever the calculation is with inflation to that now. It was some serious money. They had like 5,000 employees. They were really killing it. Is that a bad joke? Anyway, so... War ends, 1945, I'm not a history buff, somewhere around there. Now Garrett, you know, they really have to look for a new way to make money. Um, you know, all that government spending, you know, insert a war dog pictures here. This is about being pro money. <laughs> is going away and they need to find new income sources. So in comes the turbocharger that we talked about before where they had that idea. So in the early 50s, I think it was around 54, Garrett decides to split. Hey, you know, this is our, you know, plane business. This is our turbocharger business. And it becomes Air Research. Um, Air Research is in the business, 1954. Caterpillar comes to Garrett Air Research and says, hey, we want a turbocharger for our new D9 dozer. So they place an order for 5,000 turbos and the D9 Caterpillar dozer becomes the first American made turbocharged vehicle. And from there, I mean, it's basically just history. I mean, all kinds of equipment and trucks, all kinds of diesel applications always are, you know, turbocharged at this point. So first one, 54, Caterpillar. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys on my channel are truck guys, so you know that Garrett and Caterpillar have been very tight. We'll get to that later on in the video, but we're going all the way back to 54. That was the first transaction as far as Caterpillar and Garrett. Jump ahead a couple of years, it's 1962, and you know what's next? The first production, mass production, turbocharged car. And what is it? The Oldsmobile. Wait, what the hell is that thing called? Jetfire Rocket! The Oldsmobile Jetfire Rocket. Fire got that's so new and different. What? The first turbocharged production vehicle. And guess who's making that turbocharger? You guessed it. Garrett. That's what. Garrett's making that turbocharger. This car made a whopping 200 and something horsepower. Which again, not crazy by today's standards. But, you know, back in 60s, 
early 60s, that was some crazy power. And we're also talking about a carbureted application. So basically, we've got air mixing at the turbo with a carburetor and fuel, crazy stuff. I can't believe more people didn't blow up and die. Um, but yeah, really crazy stuff. So moving on from there, uh, 1968, we get the first turbocharged vehicle, wins the Indy 500, supplied by Garrett. Um, back in that mid-60s in that same time, John Deere followed suit of what Caterpillar did, the Garrett T04, very familiar with the TD04, and the T04 is very popular, not as popular now, but throughout the 90s, they're very popular as aftermarket upgrades for a lot of our import cars. Uh, John Deere says, hey, this is what we're doing. We're using these on our equipment. And basically the rest of the industrial industry followed doing the same using Garrett turbochargers. Fast forward a little bit more, 1970s, we've got the oil crisis. Uh, federal regulators started putting a lot of pressure on manufacturers, automotive manufacturers, to reduce emissions. So what did they do? Slap the goddamn turbocharger on it. That's what they did. So by 1978, there were only eight turbocharged car models. And out of that eight, seven of them were using a Garrett turbocharger. By the mid-1980s, there was over 100 turbocharged models. And, you know, by the 1990s, everybody was sporting turbos. And here we are in the 2020s. Uh, and if you don't have yourself a Tesla now, chances are you probably have a turbocharged vehicle, whether you got like an F-150 with EcoBoost or you've got, you know, a diesel, a Power Stroke, a Cummins, a Duramax. They've all got turbochargers on them. You know, even the Econobox box, Econobox, Econobox cars. You got a Chevy Cruze, you got a Turbski on that guy. So this kind of gets us up to speed where Garrett was. Um, Garrett introduced things like their VNT, their variable nozzle technology, very similar to Holset's VGT technology. Basically, just what that means is the exhaust housing was variable in size. Um, there was these little things inside. They looked like little talons. Basically, they would shift to alter the AR, um, and that was used in the industrial space, and then it made its way into the automotive space as well. Um, Garrett, what the fuck is that noise? Steven's out here running the vacuum. What a knucklehead. So as we can see from their past, Garrett is no stranger to doing OEM business. Um, you know, from going, working with the large suppliers, working to the military, going to Caterpillar and John Deere. Uh, it's very common for Garrett. They're very comfortable in the OEM space. Um, a lot of people know Garrett because of the aftermarket space, whether they're using it to upgrade an existing turbocharger or they're, you know, putting a turbocharger on a vehicle that didn't have a turbocharger. And that's kind of how Garrett became a household name. But it is important to note that Garrett's roots really aren't in the aftermarket performance industry. While they have participated like things in the Indy and they have a list of accolades in the motorsports world, you know, Garrett really is an OEM supplier and that's always going to be their core focus. So for guys, you know, in the Caterpillar world, and I'm going to cater to these Caterpillar guys because that's the majority of our business, uh, you know, coming off their truck from the factory, you probably had a Caterpillar Turbo. Um, I'm sorry, you had a Garrett Turbo. So if you had, you know, a 3406, a C12, a C10, you know, any of those trucks, they all came with Garrett's from the factory. You know, even going up into your more modern motors, so all your C15s, your 6NZs, they had GT47 Garrett's. Moving into your A-certs, if you had a C15 A-cert, you had a GT42 as your high pressure, and you had a GT55 as your low pressure. So, you know, Garrett is very well involved in these OEM applications. But you can't just call Garrett up and be like, hey, I, you know, I want a bigger you know, GT55 for my C15 Acer. They just don't do that type of work. Now, they do have a whole aftermarket line, you know, their GTX line, which is ironic because GTX is also the uh, stock ringer or code base. But when you look up the stock for Garrett Motion, it's GTX. Which is kind of cool. Um, they have that whole aftermarket line. But guys, it's important to note that Garrett's aftermarket offering is just so small. It's such a blip on their radar compared to all their OEM business. So just because, you know, Garrett is a big part of our world, you know, what we contribute as far as that aftermarket is a very small segment of their business. So I'm not to get too far off track here, but, um, you know, a lot of guys go, oh, I only want a Garrett. A lot of times Garrett only produces for the OEM, so it may be hard to get an aftermarket version of whatever Garrett turbo you want. Now, there's a ton of other suppliers out there that make a copy or something similar of that turbo, but sometimes getting genuine Garrett product for a specific OEM application, either it's not made anymore or you're going to have to go back to the OEM to get it. Let's jump back and forward to the history of Garrett. So jumping back to our guy, John Clifford Garrett, he actually died in 1963. So basically shortly after the Caterpillar deal, 
you know, a couple years after that, he didn't even get to see the John Deere deal go through. He had passed away. Uh, when he passed away, there was almost a hostile takeover of the company. The company, Garrett Motion, ended up, well, not Garrett Motion, it became Garrett Motion. Garrett decided to then partner with another business, some sort of signal oil or something like that. And that basically, throughout that time period and on to the current time, there'd be a bunch of different acquisitions and mergers and things like that. Most notably in the 90s, it was part of Honeywell. You probably have a Honeywell thermostat from where you're looking. I can see one from where I'm at. Honeywell, very popular. Uh, back in 2018, Honeywell then spun Garrett off the turbo division as Garrett Motion. Um, and it was pretty bumpy. 2020, they filed for a uh, they filed for bankruptcy, which was kind of crappy. Um, I was a stockholder. Boo! I got a lot of faith in it. Uh, I like to invest in the things I'm interested in, obviously. Um they came out of the bankruptcy. They were doing okay. Um, and as of now, it looks like there's some rumors that, you know, Garrett Motion might be back up for sale. Who knows? But, you know, they've cranked out great products. It's a very old company. And it's pretty interesting. I had a lot of fun doing the research on this video. Uh, so, guys, if you like this video, if we should do more of this type of video, let me know. I can do the history of Wholeset. I can do the history of Borg Warner. I can never do this again. You can say, yo, you suck. Stop making videos. And I'll cry, but I'll keep making these videos. I'll just kind of do something different. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope you had a good time. Enjoy your week, boys. Take care.